Hi, and welcome to the Bees Knees Podcast. This is your host, PJ Ewing. Today we have an interview with a very influential and very important person in the world of knee surgery and recovery. Her name is Marie Buckner, and she's noted mostly for her blog and website and community, which you can find at booktoots.com. Her journey began in 1975 with a somewhat horrific car accident, and that set her on a path of recovery that lasted many years. Uh, Twelve years ago, she ended up having a knee replacement surgery, and that really is the origination of this BookToots healing website and the community that she has created there. It is a global organization, a global community. It's very, very large. It wins awards consistently from the various folks that give awards for blogs. And in this case, we have a chance to hear from the source herself all about really her history and how this whole thing happened. So I'm very pleased here at the Bees Knees podcast to uh, share my conversation with Marie Buckner from Book Toots Healing. Welcome to the Bees Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Okay, well, uh, I'm originally from the Detroit area, and um, I, I, st- I had a knee replacement. Oh, it's been about 11 years ago. And um, I was talking to some friends about it, and unless you go through the experience stuff, you just don't understand it. So I was feeling kind of alone and, um, you know, just despondent, so I started writing about it. I've always had an enjoyment of writing. English composition was one of my strong points in school. <laughs> so anyways, I started writing about it on Book Toots, and to my surprise, I started having people visit the site and sharing their experiences and realizing that they were not alone, which in turn helped me feel less alone. And it was, it was wonderful. So, you know, I've always believed also that it's important to um, help others to let others feel that they're not alone and that, you know, someone is there to listen. So um, it's developed into a strong community, and it's just wonderful to know um, that, you know, the site's helping people and that my words mean something to people, and it's wonderful to be able to share that. And then um, it's developed into a community where there's, Last time I checked, it was 750,000 international readers, and people feel comfortable sharing their experiences and commenting, and it's just wonderful. And in addition to operating the site, which was just, um, I found out last week, it was rated one of the top 50 total knee replacement blogs in the world <laughs> by Feedspot. So, you know, I was thrilled when I got that email. And it's also been listed as one of the top knee replacement blogs by Healthline.com. And then also, um, I'm a patient leader with We Go Health, which is a patient advocacy site. And um, just this week, I actually got approached by someone that wants me to provide some insight into the aging population and the flu and total knee replacement. So... You know, it's nice to be able to help people and to write about it. And when I'm not writing, I enjoy music. I play the flute. So I entertain, and it's just it's wonderful. M- music hits everybody at some level, and it's wonderful to be able to share that gift. Amazing. So I hope that helps others get some insight into me. Yeah, well, a little bit, but I want more, Marie. I want more. Oh. Um, where <laughs> did your this wonderful desire to help people come from when, I mean, you were, you said you grew up in Michigan. Uh, you don't yes. live in Michigan anymore. Tell us, tell us about your early days and, and then leaving Michigan and where you live now and that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, my early days, I think it all started by helping, wanting to help people because my great grandfather was, um, he was a diabetic and then eventually became a paraplegic. So he was um, in a wheelchair and, it was wonderful to be able to help him out, you know, and to also see how he helped other people. And one of the ways that he helped was he played harmonica. <laughs> so as a little kid, you know, uh, we would sit, sit on the floor and then listen to him, and he played a mean harmonica, and that's what instilled my interest in music. 
And then once I started playing the music, I saw how people's faces would light up. And they always had stories to share. And it was nice to know that I could help elevate someone's mood by playing music and also have people help me get elevated by hearing music. So it started at a young age to be able to help people out. And I've always firmly believed in helping people that, you know, like wheelchair bound or have mobility issues or have some kind of issue. It's just, you know, life is worthless if you can't help people. <laughs> so that's, You took flute you know, lessons at a young age, did you? Oh, yeah. Well, I started in second grade. It was called the flutophone, and we played that for two years. And the purpose of that was to get us um, affiliated with how to read music and fingering the instrument at the same time. And then in fourth grade, in summer band, we got our real instruments. And to this day, I still remember everybody else in the band was making all kinds of noises with their new instruments except for us flutes because <laughs> you can't just blow into the hole to get a sound out. So mm-hmm. we each had to have um, a private tutor help us, you know, get uh, develop our embouchure, which is how you form your mouth to get music. <laughs> do so you still that was play kind of now. Do you still play? Yes, I do. Today? You what sure kind of do. Stuff do you play? What do you What do you What do you play? What kind of music? Well, it depends. If I play at weddings, it's usually classical. Classical, mm-hmm. sometimes modern. It just um, Basically, they can tell me the kind of genre they want, and I'll come up with some music, or um, they'll just totally leave it up to me, and I find that classical goes over well. And I also I entertain at retirement communities, and that's wonderful because that's really a forgotten generation, and they have such wonderful stories. You know, music touches everybody, and I feel very privileged to share that. And when I'm Playing for retirement communities, they love to hear those old campfire songs, sing-alongs, you know, like Daisy Daisy or Red River Valley. <laughs> and I occasionally have someone come up and say, do you have any Mozart by chance? And they're usually the ones that are, you know, the, the former retired uh, symphony pianists and uh, opera singers. So it's nice to do that. And I'm currently taking songwriting lessons, and that's a blast. <laughs> There's just so much to learn, so that's kind of cool stuff. I had a, a holiday gig um, last year, and the reason that I was brought in for the entertainment was because um, his owner, it was a, a husband and wife, had a private party at their house. And the reason they wanted me to come in was their daughter had graduated from um, Juilliard, but she gave up the flute because she got into drugs and drinking. And uh. her parents wanted, yeah. Her parents wanted to bring in a flutist and, you know, just kind of maybe inspire. And I didn't know that her daughter had, or their daughter had that background. I knew that she had uh, some kind of musician background. But when I found out it was Juilliard, I just went, uh, why aren't, you know, you went to Juilliard, you graduated from Juilliard? Oh, yeah. Uh, Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you doing anything? You've got a gift. Oh, I don't know. (laughs) I'm like, oh, man, you know, that was, that's a huge accomplishment to go to Juilliard and graduate. I played songs like White Christmas, <laughs> which is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're trying to change a life here, Marie, and you're, you're over oh, yeah. here in Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Oh, that was, that's pressure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> I can imagine. They said, well, play whatever you want. And I love that song, um, It's a Wonderful World. I love that yeah. song. So I was playing that, and then that's when I noticed two of the people in attendance. It was a father and a son, and the son was in a wheelchair. And I looked at them when I was playing, and the father had that faraway look in his eyes. you know. And then the son, his eyes started to tear up. I'm going, oh, man. You know, the song has some kind of impact on them. And then they came up to me afterwards and thanked me that they hadn't heard that song in a a while, and it brings back such good memories. And, you know, that's just, it's such a privilege to be able to share the music and know that it touches someone. I'm just a conduit, (laughs) you know, for, for my flute, and it's just wonderful. So that's 
one of the ways that I like to help people. Music and my words. <laughs> right. So. And you, um, you left Michigan, and you're now on the West Coast, right? That's correct. I currently live in the Seattle area. I, I lived in Florida for 10 years. I moved down there um, at the time because the unemployment rate in Michigan was so high. It was when the auto industries were really downsizing and jobs were very scarce. So my partner and I moved down to, um, to Florida, and I lived down there for 10 years, and I loved it from October to March. <laughs> and from March to October, it is very hot and humid down there. And, you know, I just reached a point where I knew I loved the water, and I had never been around the mountains. So I got on the Internet and started doing some research, and California was out of the question because uh, – it looked like there was too many people there. <laughs> and then at the time, I had passed the CPA exam. So um, you know, I was working in accounting. And I checked into Oregon. And you know, Beaverton looked interesting. So I called the chamber there. And they said that you know, there was three high schools, a lot of traffic. Nah. Then I got a mailing from Washington, from Bashan, Washington. And it turns out when I did research, Washington had a grandfather clause in place so that you could transfer the CPA over here from another state. I went, cool. So that's where I ended up in Vashon for a bit. And then I've been here since. And yeah, I love it. I love the, the Northwest. But it rains here all the time, so you don't want to move here. <laughs> you no, know, no, you don't want anyone to move there because you want it to yourself. I get it. I know right. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> In the, we're closed. We don't want any more. I know that the Californians are, have a bad reputation up your way, don't they? Because they like to run up there. Uh -huh. Where did the Book Toots name come from? Uh, that's a good story. <laughs> um, the book came from um, I was starting to write books. That was my goal, to start writing books about the experience because in 1975, I was in a car accident. That's what caused the a fracture femur, which led to arthritis in the knee. And I was in a body cast for two years. So I figured, well, I've had a lot of people ask me to write a book about that. So I figured, well, I'll start writing a book about that. And then the toots actually comes from, I'm a huge Three Stooges fan. And when they're around high-class women, they always call them toots. Hey, toots, how you doing? So I thought, book toots. So it ends up book toots, and that's how I got the name. <laughs> got it. <laughs> but the blog itself just basically took off with the total knee replacement. So that's what it's That's really amazing. On. You know, it, Marie, it's amazing. It, it's not a long period of time since you had the surgery, uh, obviously the knee replacement, you know, many years after you had that accident. But, um, yeah. you know, the amount of people that you've reached, obviously, with the power of the Internet, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool to, to, to get an email um, from people all around the world that you know are just sharing their experiences. And that, that's fun. <laughs> really, Good really fun. Yeah. Um, so let's focus on the the book toots. I now want to say book toots, but a uh, book toots uh, site, and you know, give us a little oral, verbal tour of. What, what's there and who it's for and just the nature of, of the blog and the site. Okay. Well, the main focus of the site itself is on total knee replacement. And I have updates for like so many months after the, up, after the surgery so people that are going through that phase, you know, can just look at the blog posts and share their experiences or know they're not alone. And then I also have a lot of, um, like exercise posts about what's easy to do. You don't really need to go to a gym. <laughs> and then I find that sharing that um, helps people realize they don't have to have a lot of money in order to recuperate. And then um, I write about, uh, well, I write about other things besides the total knee replacement, such as um, having a broken jaw, having double vision, having a fractured C1. I write about those also, and I get you know responses from that. And then, since I wear a almost two-inch shoe lift, I have written about that also. And 
it's interesting because I've had people respond with their stories and then also ask me, well, do I know of sites where they can donate some shoes? So I'm helping people out in that way. We're actually helping each other out, and it's nice. I've shared different sites that are usually nonprofits that accept the, the shoe donations, and that's kind of cool. And then um, what's very helpful for my readers is I have a search bar in there. So when they have a topic that they're really interested in, they can just type it in the search, and it will bring up different posts because I have over, oh, geez, over 950 posts that I have written. And it will bring up the different links to the, um, just, you know, the, the posts that they can read and comment on if they want. And one of the things that I'm very proud of is the fact that when someone sends a comment or they post a comment on my site, I re personally respond. And when I first started doing that, I didn't give it much thought because it was just common sense to me. But then I started hearing from people that they posted to so many blogs and never had a response that they were surprised to actually get a personal response. So I believe that's one of the reasons that you know the, the site is so popular. And you know it's, it's just wonderful. And then I sell... Um, I've authored books. One of the most popular ones is um, Preparing for a Total Knee Replacement, Patient's Perspective on Preparing for a Total Knee Replacement, or TKR. And people can just buy that um, It's pay, through PayPal. And once I get the information that the payment's been processed, I forward the document to them, the PDF document via email. And then I've also written um, a water exercise book because I love to swim and do water aerobics. So um, as part of you know, my exercise regime, I just developed exercises and also enhanced the ones that I knew already existed. So I have um, this book that contains these exercises that can help people out. And it's either in deep water, shallow water, or you know, just sitting on a stairs, so different phases. That can help people out, but they're tried and true because I, I do them all the time. <laughs> so it's nice to share those with people. And then my books are also sold via Amazon. Um, I have one that's popular that's called Dealing with Insomnia After Total Knee Replacement. That is a compilation of patient stories. Um, that are, it's over 100 stories. And... I find that people um, purchase that book when they want to know that you know they're not alone and read other stories. And I've had a couple people comment that you know they're glad they got the book because you know it was one of the nights when they couldn't sleep, and they just read through other stories to realize they weren't alone. And the reason I wrote that blog post originally, which sent all these people to comment was the fact that during recuperation for 10 months solid, I did not sleep more than two months, two months, two hours per night. And I'm going, oh, because I wasn't on pain meds. So, you know, I, I was just frustrated, and that was part of the deal. I just got on the site and started writing about it. <clears throat> so um, then I authored a book also about um, living with the after effects of a, a broken jaw, fractured mandible. And oh, that's sold on Amazon. And, yeah. and then um, there's an awards and recognition page, which I post, you know, well, of course, the awards that I've received, like the WeGo Patient Leader and the Healthline.com, the best rated best of TKR blogs, which is cool. <laughs> and then um, I... I believe I just put that speed spot one on there. So, um, you did, just, and you know what's funny, Marie, is you're so what? you're you're so successful, right? And you're so modest. Y you had written, oh. "I'm one of the top 50 knee replacement blogs for knee surgeons mm -hmm. and patients." Right? Isn't that nice? You're you're yeah. number seven. You're not like top 50. You're top 10. You're much bigger than you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, you're number seven, or I think it is. I believe it was number seven. Um, but holy, yeah, you're 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 somebody. You're somebody. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, just for those who are listening, I want to say that um, uh, a, a lot of these links, I'll, I'll try to capture as many as possible, are going to be in the show notes for this particular interview. So uh, there will be a, a 10 links. Uh, when So if you're listening on Apple, you can actually just look at the notes and you know, go to some of the links and I'll have them all there for you. Of course, you can just directly go to booktoots.com and you know start poking around. I, I know you'll find it. The search bar would be instrumental in that. But um, I'll try to make it as, e- as easy as possible to find the books as well as to find some of these other great blogs. I mean, you get three or 400 comments on some of these blogs, don't you? Yes. Yes, the eight months after the TKR, I believe it's over 450 <laughs> And the dealing okay. with insomnia has been, I think that's about 150. How do people find you? Do you ask them, like, I, you know, they, well, they, they end up there somehow. How do they get there? Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of it is word of mouth. And then also I find I get um, some people from the WeGo Health site and also from Healthline. And I reach out and regularly submit my site to um, searches, you know, like uh, Bing. <laughs> Like being Yahoo, I do that myself. And then also to um, website submission sites. I list my blog there, and then it's also on different um, blog directories. I do that. I do it all myself. So it, it takes time, but it's worth the results. <laughs> so. Good for you. Smart. Thanks. It's really smart to, Thanks. Smart to do that. Uh, are, are there <laughs> things you're doing looking forward that are are going to be things that we want to tell people about right now in terms of developments on the site or other books or initiatives that you've yeah. got going? I have been approached to write a book about um, how caregivers can help out a total knee replacement um, person, patient. So I'm, I'm in the midst of writing that. And then I'm also in the midst of um, developing my foresight, my website so it's rather easier to maneuver around with because I've written so many blog posts, um, even though someone can look through the categories, I have each post categorized, they can go to my right sidebar, which is on the right side of the page. So you can just click on that, and it'll have a drop-down menu of all the categories, which how many posts are in that category. People can do that. But in the meantime, I want to make it a little easier. So I'm in the midst of developing that and... I'm in the midst of developing uh, an email newsletter and a podcast. So, you know, there's a lot I'm working on, which is nice. On and I'm also, I've got a Facebook page they might want to visit, which um, it's called Book Toots Healing. And what I do there is it basically um, with every post that I write, I put it over onto the Facebook because people like Facebook. <laughs> Yeah. People love Facebook. Can I throw something in here? <laughs> at, no. At the very okay. I'm well, I will anyway. So <laughs> you will anyway. <laughs> I was being polite. No. <laughs> I know you were so polite. Um, They're rude, PJ. Good guy. <laughs> Anyways, when we first started talking, you asked me to tell you about myself. Well, um, one of the reasons that I had the knee replacement was. As I mentioned earlier, um, it was from a fractured femur and the um, arthritis in my knee. Anyway, that was all the result of a car accident, which happened on December 13, 1975. And um, that I had a closed head injury, and there was subdermal hematoma with, it's, now I believe it's called a brain bleed. But then I also, um, because my head hit the dash and went through the window, um, there was nerve palsy and, let's see, a damaged nerve, weak muscle in my left eye, which caused strabismus, which is double vision. I still have that, but I have a prism to correct most of it. And then I fractured my jaw, and that required surgery. And then, let's see, I'm going from top to bottom. <laughs> I fractured my C1, which is a cervical vertebrae, which to this day I have shortness of breath um, every day but I, I learned to live with it. And then, let's see, there was three fractured ribs on my right side, which punctured my kidney and caused internal bleeding. And then there was the fractured femur, and that wasn't healing properly. So what they had to do 
was to take a bone graft from my hip, put that on a steel rod, and then implanted that into my femur. And I had that in for a while. Uh, I, had, I was in a body cast before that was done. Yeah, and when the femur wasn't healing properly, that's when they thought they'd do the exercise or the exercise, <laughs> the um, surgery to put the steel rod in. Well, um, you know, I was out and about after that whole uh, fiasco, and then I fell on some ice and refractured my femur. So the, the, the second fracture happened above where the steel rod was located. So I had to go back into the hospital. They did the surgery, took out took out the steel rod, and then um, put me back into a body cast. So, <laughs> so that while that was all done, you know, I remember when I had the last body cast taken off, the doctors asked me if I wanted to take it home, and I just looked at them and go, "What am I going to do with it? Hang it on the wall?" <laughs> and it just. Well, some people like to keep their cast as a, you know, reflection, remembrance of what they do. I, I don't want that thing. No, take it. So <laughs> that's how that all came about. And then what I found very interesting is the doctors at that time said, you have arthritis in your right knee. Um, it's not going to bother you now, but give it 30 years down the road and you're going to start having problems. And it was almost 30 days to the month that I ended up having the knee replacement. Wow. Oh, wow. That's kind of very interesting. Yeah. Right so, on target. Yeah. Right on target. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're kind of smarter than we think they are sometimes. <laughs> Just kidding. You, they're very you've been smart. Thrown, you've been thrown some real curveballs in this life, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. But got to learn to deal with them. <laughs> And then one of the deals was when I was recuperating from my, my knee replacement, I had someone tell me to just suck it up because, you know, it's hard. When you first have the knee replacement, your, your leg, entire leg is a complete dead weight because they have to cut into your quadriceps. <laughs> so anyways, I had people just tell me, oh, you can do it if you really want to. And it's like, no. <laughs> I can't even move my leg. Oh, you can. If you. So that's one of the things I had to deal with, and that's one of the reasons I started the blog, because people that didn't know any better, <laughs> well, you can do it. Well, no, I can't, but I want to. You know, I always believe that mind overrules body, but there are definitely some times when it doesn't. So that's that's all I got to say about that. Well, you know, I, I'll say a silly thing, which I do a lot. Uh, you know, when you're given lemons, you make lemonade, right? <laughs> and yeah, you have yeah. been, you know, given the gift of a lot of pain and a tremendous number of surgeries and a whole bunch of recoveries. And in that process, you have learned and have, you know, taken advantage of this misfortune that you've had that many, many people have not had to endure. And now mm. you are paying it forward, another silly phrase, but uh, there you are out there sharing and helping and creating um, just on your own. You know, it's all organic. It's, you know, you're smart. You're sharing the website in the right places, but you're, you're just doing it because you want to help people. And lo and behold, you're, you're out there, you know, winning awards and becoming, you know, obviously in, in quotes, an influencer in this particular area of the world. And it's, it's really admirable. Hmm. It's really well, admirable. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. More power yeah, to you. That's why I wanted to interview you because I, I mean, I, I'm like, what? I, I kept looking at lists of, you know, who's doing what, right? And there's this book mm -hmm. tooth thing. I'm like, what is it? Who is this? Who is this lady? I got to figure right. that out. I got to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, okay. I, to be honest, I'm, help, I'm hoping that your own audience hears this because... Mm -hmm. They, I don't know, have they had a chance to, like, hear you speak about this? I mean, have you been recorded? Have, have you done this kind of stuff before? No. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a chance. And all these people who've <laughs> read your words and have been influenced by you and saved by you in so many ways, and, and they mm -hmm. don't really, you know, this is a way to get to know. So what don't we know about Marie uh, right now? What, 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 what have we missed about you and your background well, and what you do. 
Well, I have an advanced degree in business administration specializing in accounting and minoring in psychology. <laughs> and I worked in corporate America for, oh, gee, probably 40 years, passed the CPA exam. And, uh, I used to own a, a natural foods business where I authored cookbooks and had a, a newsletter and also did cooking classes. So that's one of the reasons I like to write, you know, I develop recipes. And I write, um, you know, articles on that because I, oh, I believe 100% in holistic healing. You know, I don't take any medications now, and um, that's kind of unique for, I'm going to be, tomorrow's my birthday, I'm going to be 65. <laughs> and I'm not on any medications. <laughs> so that's, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. And I exercise regularly. I've always placed an importance on exercise, and I, I think, well, ever since I was a kid, I was one of those half tomboys and half girly girls. I had, I had friends that just played with dolls, so I'd play with them. And then, you know, I used to love to get the gardener snakes because we grew our own food. I'd get these little gardener snakes and chase after my sissy friends. And I loved doing that. They'd just start screaming. And, uh, anyways, <laughs> and then I also had, um, I was always involved in sports. I used to be a, a field goalie, you know, for the team. So that was kind of cool. And I was a good baseball player and I've always loved to be physical. I, I like to take care of my health and I just don't understand people that don't. <laughs> but, you know, I'm very, I'm very proud of being able to, and to exercise. And when you can exercise, just do it. <laughs> so anyways, did I tell too much? Okay. No, my gosh, are you kidding? I love it. This is why we're doing this, <laughs> okay. really. Uh, you know, it, we're going to miss happy birthday. And uh, I want to be the first because it's not your birthday until tomorrow. <laughs> but this is going to come out, obviously, after your your 65th birthday. But yeah. uh, we're all going to wish you a belated. Everyone who hears this, you have to go to the website and you have to uh, make a <laughs> comment and, and share a, a oh. well-wishing message. Um, it's booktoots.com. And the email is, do we share your exact email? Is that how we should we do that? You can, uh, sure. It's either okay. Marie B. Yeah, it's Marie B. Okay. at booktoots. dot com, or I also get them through booktoots thirty five, the the numeral three five, at gmail. dot com. Okay, okay. So we all That's get to probably, go and wish you happy birthday oh. at one of those two places. <laughs> You know, oh, thank it's you. A big day. It's a big, big deal. Sixty-five. Are you, yeah. Do you have anything special planned for your sixty-fifth? Oh well, I'm going to go see Bob Seger. <laughs> oh my gosh! Seriously? Yeah, I know. I know. I, it's I saw it's the third him. Third time. What's that? I saw him. I saw him oh. long ago, and it was a power outage right in the middle of the concert, and. It was oh. just we had to sit there. We all sat there for like ten minutes, like no one could. He didn't even have a microphone. We were just kind of stopped, and then it all. Oh. I don't, it was in Detroit. I don't remember the venue. Probably a big one, Coco uh-huh. Hall, maybe, probably. Oh, Coco, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I st- I first got introduced to Bob Seger when I was uh, ten years old, like in fourth grade. He used to play at the Garden City Park, and it was twenty five cents. <laughs> then wow. it, then it went up to. 50 cents, and then during the Woodstock era, he did a lot of free concerts. You know, and I remember him back with The le- the Last Herd. I was just li- listening and watching some of those YouTube videos. But anyways, I've been a big fan of his for the longest time, so that'll be nice to see. And then there's also um, an air show. I love aviation. There's an air show with the um, Royal Air Force. It's their aerobatic team, the, the Red Arrows. And that's going to be in Oregon this weekend, so I'm hoping to catch that on Sunday. Saturday is Bob Seger, and Sunday is the Red Arrows. That's so, a celebration. That's, that's a yeah. celebration. Wow. All right, Marie. <laughs> well, thanks again, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all the new stuff that you're doing on this, this new site. Thank you very much, and, and thank, thank you to your listeners, too. It's, without them, we couldn't do anything. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633.
Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us. X10. Back 